Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are talking about some of the best web app investments that you can make starting off FIFA 21 Ultimate Team in the first couple of days as we are in the web app period where you're trading before you can actually get into your club on the console, whether that's for EA Access or for early access or for the full game release, whatever that looks like for you, I wanna talk about some of the investing methods for ways that we can put some coins into cards early on in FIFA 21 to make some coins in that first week because there is a lot of market rise and there is incredible, incredible uh, potential for making lots of coins. Whether you're opening packs and you're spending FIFA points or you're doing an RTG account like myself, there's a lot of ways we can make coins. There's investing in a lot of out of packs cards, in meta cards, and in SBC cards. And I'm gonna talk about all three of those today on this video. Yes, I'm gonna talk about these new ones to watches right here. We now have three new confirmed ones to watch cards as of yesterday in the pitch notes. And out of packs, investing with ones to watch cards and team of the week cards is the number one thing that I'm gonna talk about today in this video. So first thing is first, let's talk about ones to watches. All right, last year in FIFA, 20 ultimate team there were a couple ones to watch cards uh that were very hyped up and a lot of people wanted those cards and this was one of them we're going to take a look at pepe from fifa 20 this is a once to watch card that people i think expected and he ended up he did end up coming out but this is the potential that we have for an out of packs investment with a gold card that gets a once to watch and then goes out of packs all right this is how it works Pepe is in packs for the first couple days, and this is when we're looking to buy the first day or two of the web app before he really spikes up that much. Uh, as you can see, he went up 20,000 coins in one day. So if you really got him down here on the first day of the web app at about 30,000 coins, you were chilling because he went up to 60, 70 K. Then he goes out of packs on the full game release and goes up even higher to 92 K. So why did Pepe go up that high last year? Well, first of all, if you bought at 30 K and you sold here at 60, you're making incredible money, GG's. I don't mind you selling there because the second part here is unknown. Some cards, when they actually go out of packs, they're over invested in. So they actually drop because there's so many people that buy these out of packs gold cards. This is something that is very, very popular as an investing method. So you have to be careful with any of these investments that you make that I talk about today. If a lot of people are doing it, if you have a lot of competition for snipes on that first day, there's a lot of um, people that are outbidding you on these cards. I would be very, very careful because that might mean that if there's a lot of supply for those cards as well, they could be actually dropping when they go out of packs because some people will sell those cards and they'll flood the market and that will ca cause the card to go down because everybody thinks it's going to go up because it's out of packs. But what happens is there's over investing and over selling that happens and the card drops. That was not the case last year with Pepe though, being a rare position uh, in a in a very popular league. There were not a lot of right mid, right wing players in the Prem. It's the same thing this year. So this is who we're going for, right? Potential ones to watch players. Now we already know guys like Werner, Ziyech, Bale, Odegaard, Thiago, and Akimi. People are going to be investing in these cards from day one. At the very start of the web app, people who have enough coins are going to start buying these cards because they're going to rise. They are honestly going to rise because they're most likely going out of packs on that first Friday. Now, some of these cards... Some of them, one of them, two of them, I don't know, might actually be in ones to watch team too because there are two teams of ones to watches confirmed by EA Sports. So let's say Timo Werner is not in ones to watch team one. His price might actually dip after that and there might be another investing opportunity window, which we'll talk about later on when that time comes. But these cards are all going to be rising up. Their gold card versions are all going to be rising up as we get in towards the actual drop date of ones to watch. So their graphs are gonna look like this, a steep incline, most likely, then we get to that date. But you're really worried about this initial jump. We're worried about buying any of these cards or any of these other cards I'm talking about today. We are worried about buying those on the first day or two days of EA Access because after that, or excuse me, first day or two of the web app because after that EA Access comes and stuff on the market just starts to explode as people open packs, get coins, build teams, play games, and get rewards inside of foot. So that's option number one. You can invest in an out of packs card like a once to watch potential. Now, of course, that card could not get a once to watch. And when you get here to this Friday, you could probably see it drop down because that hype is no longer there for that card going out of packs. So what I would do is 
I would sell these cards, honestly, on Saturday or Sunday. Honestly, it's going to be like a two or three day hold on a lot of these. That is the safe route. Take your coins, get out, go buy something else, go buy your team. If it's going to be, uh, if you make enough coins and you're going to be buying meta players that are going to continue to rise for the next month or so, then that's it's still a great time. Even though you're buying at a higher price than what it was, you didn't have the coins before to buy that. You just made a bunch of coins and you're making another investment in meta players that are continuing to rise. So that is kind of what I would do with these ones to watch cards if you're going that route, which is going to be very effective. I'm going to be doing and looking into that myself. You're going to want to buy as early as you can and probably sell right before the early access drop. So like Sunday squad battle rewards right before that. I would honestly sell all of your investments if it's an OTW. That's the safe way to do it, right? That's selling into the hype basically with these cards that are going to be going out of packs per se. So that's option number one, out of packs, wants to watch cards. That goes for team of the week as well. Cards that will be in team of the week two, team of the week two. You'd want to invest in those gold cards because those would be going out of packs. Last year, somebody who was an example is actually somebody who I clicked on to start this video was Riyad Mahrez. His card went out of packs actually for team of the week three, and you can see what happened, right? He had a good game on the weekend. His card started to rise a little bit. He went to 20K, and he actually went up 5,000 coins a card up to 26K after he did get into team of the week three, and then he crashed after that. But again, this was a meta gold card that wasn't expected to get a once to watch or anything last year at the start of FIFA 20. He went from 12,000 coins all the way up to 25, and that's the next part that I'm going to talk about, talking about meta players and how to choose what players to invest in. This is where it gets good. If you're not going to invest in out of pack specials or out of packs golds, investing in just meta players that people are going to want to buy is key. And your thought process has to be what players are people going to be buying in the first week of FIFA that are not starter team players. Like it's like a second or third level player that people who are either spending FIFA points or getting rewards from playing games as they build their coin balances, what players are they going to be buying to add to their squads? That's what you want to be thinking of because those are the cards that actually rise up as that's where the demand is. People are upgrading their teams. They want to get better players and they pay the price for them and they just more and more demand for those as people get more and more coins. Here's an example from this year, Premier League right wings. Gareth Bale, is not going to be really in packs that much. So he's going to be another one of those gold cards that we watch out for for once to watches. So we can almost ignore him because he's not just going to rise for being meta. He's going to rise for the OTW potential. Look at how rare and how few right wing slash right mid players there are in the Premier League. Lucas is one of the most, you know, I see him in so many starter squads. He's not going to be cheap. That's a card that on first day, I would love to invest in if I have enough coins because he's going to fly. But somebody, some of these guys might fly under the radar, right? Because if you're starting day one with a Premier League squad, you might be using Adama. He might be a couple K. Greenwood, cheap. Daniel James, pretty cheap. Minamino, cheap. Under, cheap. Ayos Perez, probably not. He's slow, but cheap. That's the whole point, right? You're upgrading from those cheap cards to maybe a higher tier 82, 83 rated card or 84 Riyad Mahrez or 85 this year. I'm a huge fan of Willian. I invested in this card last year at about 8,000 coins and he went up to about 16K. I feel like this year he's gonna, he does have ones to watch potential as well. So that's one thing here that I'd be careful with. But this is why I like Premier League right wings, man, because who are you gonna use? You're gonna use Willian, Pepe, Gareth Bale, Lucas, Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva, or Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah is the top tier number one right wing in the Prem. He is very expensive. He honestly has a three star weak foot as well, so he's not that good. Mahrez has a five star skill, four star weak foot, doesn't have the pace, but he has really good dribbling, and he has great links to those Cancelos, to the Walkers, and he's honestly decently playable. Maybe as a maybe as a center attacking mid, he's got decent enough passing stats especially with an a um a boost and he's got really good agility and balance so if the meta is the same as fifa 20 he's going to be very very good in game i'm a huge fan of mares of willian of pepe lucas bernardo silva even uh i'm a huge fan of these premier league right wings to make a big boom because if you're doing a right wing in the prem you need that player for your squad you don't have a lot of options and there's a lot of meta options here or there's a there's only a few meta options here that I think will rise. And a lot of people are running Prem Squad, so they're going to need these links. That's why I really like Mares, Pepe, Willian, even Bernardo Silva as cards that you could watch 
as you start to invest this year. Let's look at another prem position that I think is kind of rare in terms of that step up in value from a starter squad to you know leveling up your team to the next level. Premier League center backs, a lot of lower tier guys. Ake, Lindelof, you know, one, two, three thousand coins to start the game. But after that, if you're going from like a 79 or 80 rated center back on a Premier League squad, what are you going to be buying next to upgrade your team? That's where we want to invest. And there's honestly only one card that a lot of people are going to be end up buying to upgrade their squad, and that is Joe Gomez. He's going to be pricey off of the rip in FIFA 21, but if you can get in on this guy on that first day or first day and a half, Joe Gomez is going to be an incredible investment because he is the only Premier League center back above 80 pace. The only one. Van Dijk isn't even as fast as he is, and he's 90 rated. 82 pace, 83 defense, 80 physical. This is going to be a very, very hyped up card right here. And I want you guys, if you have enough coins, he's probably going to be 25, 30 K first day. I want you to drop that cash, especially if you're opening FIFA points. This is a big time baller to invest in because there's so much hype on him. And that's a card that you honestly would see rise for the next, honestly, probably month. Some of these cards, you're going to be, again, like we talked about Willian and Riyad Mahrez, those might be sales that you, you take the coins on in the you know a week after investing in them. But Joe Gomez, put him in your team, play with him, keep a couple on the transfer list if you have some coins and you want to invest in that stuff because those types of cards are going to boom. Now, some people have already been making um, some, I guess, comparisons to cards from the prior year. This year, of course, or last year, sorry, Leng Lei, was a card that really, really took off in terms of popularity because of his links. And look what happened to his price last year. You guys remember, check this out. The dude was 20,000 coins day one, went up to 60,000 coins on the weekend, and then look how high he went. He went all the way over to 126,000 coins as a peak on the PlayStation just because of how meta he was with all the links. The French links with La Liga were huge last year. And I feel like Joe Gomez could have a similar trajectory this year. Maybe not all the way up to 120K, but possibly all the way to 100K. And I feel like you might be able, wherever he is, Joe Gomez, I just clicked on him. You might be able to snag this Joe Gomez guy for like 25, 35, 40,000 coins first day on the web app. And honestly, I think you might end up getting 100K for him a couple weeks after that, just because of the lack of the pace, of the pace in the Premier League. Joe Gomez's card fits the meta perfectly. Medium, medium work rates is just fine. He's got 80 pace, over 80 defense physical, and he's six foot two, and he's got a lot of hype. See this little, this popularity meter right here, this first row, who's got the highest number in here? Dobinson Sanchez, 27. Joe Gomez, 48 on the hype meter, higher than everybody else except for Ake uh, on here. Ake is even below him still. So I'm just saying that those those are the types of thought processes that you want to have when you're looking to invest in players on the web app, right? I'm not saying Fernandinho might be a, a bad investment. Fernandinho probably is going to be a decent investment for sure as one of like the second best center backs in this game. 64 pace, decent work rates. He's probably going to have a decent weak foot as well. That's not a bad card at all. Toby Alderweire route, 63 pace, but high defense at the start of the game. 60 pace for a center back is with a chem style. It's kind of what you have to, to live with sometimes. So that's one way you can look for like rare positions and make good investments based off of that. You don't always have to sort by league either. You could sort by nationality. Another little filter that I like here is the French center backs. Now there's a decent amount of cards in here, but again, just like for the Premier League center back situation, look what we have here. A lot of low level, cheap, starter squad OP beast, French center backs. Kundi, Upamecano, Zuma, I would say is all right, you know, but Konate, those types of players that we're all looking at right now for starter squads. When you're done using a, a, a Jules Kundi card, right? Or Upamecano, who are you going to upgrade to? You're going to upgrade to Presnel Kempembe, probably a 20,000 coin card. Lucas Hernandez, probably a 25, 30, 40, maybe 30,000, 40,000 coin card. And then from there, you're into the upper echelon. Umtiti is going to be expensive. Langley is an 85. Varane, Laporte. So I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan of this card right here. Because especially the links to Alfonso Davies, a very hyped up player. This is like, again, the second tier type of player that you're going to want to try to upgrade your ultimate team to. I love this investment. I love it a lot. Links galore. This guy had a once to watch last year, and he, again, 
was one of those cards that absolutely exploded after his once to watch was confirmed. Look at this man. He was 15,000 coins last year. Day one, 15k for this card. That's atrocious. He went all the way to 50,000 coins before he went out of packs. And then he went to 90k. The dude went almost to 90,000 coins last year because he was out of packs for once to watch. Now, obviously, he's not a once to watch this year, but I don't think it's anywhere out of the realm of possibility that this, this card will at some point be 50, 60, possibly even 70,000 coins with the Bayern Munich hype, um, winning the Champions League and all that sort of stuff. I'm a huge fan of this card. And if you have, if you're somebody who's got over a couple hundred thousand coins, I, I would put a lot of money in, into this dude right here because he's going to be fan freaking tastic. Now, let's talk about the last thing investing in SBC fodder. Now, this is a bit of a different scenario. It's a bit of a different scenario, right? If you're investing in SBC fodder, you're probably on a lower tier end, right? Like I talked about Mares being maybe one of the more cheaper cards you can invest in. Willian maybe being under 10,000 coins off the bat, or, or Pepe being one of those cards as well. If you're somebody who's only got 30, 40, 50,000 coins, you don't want to just go buy one 20k player and sit and have no coins for a week while you wait that wait for that player to rise. You want to buy somebody who's more in like the three, four, five, six thousand coin range so that you can buy multiple of them. If you find a card early on in the game when you have a market rise as significant as this, quantity is your best friend. If it's somebody that's going to have good demand, if you can buy more of them, you're going to make more profit because you're making per coin or per card coin profits that just compound and add on top of each other. And it's making the most of your investment. Buying more of that lower level card will grant you more profit, especially after tax, because tax is configured on every sale. So you're losing 5% on a little amount instead of a big amount, right? And you're put forth, you're putting forth less coins, less capital to make that investment. So maybe you look at some SBC players like Zawa, or I'm just using an example here of French left backs. I don't know what the advanced SBCs are going to require. If it's going to be the same requirements as last year or different, but start to look at some of the SBC fodder that is kind of, you know, as we get the full database, because we don't actually have the full database yet. But of course, this is the one that everybody talks about is the Argentinian left backs from last year. And again, it's looking pretty bare this year as well. We don't have the full database yet, but this is going to be where a lot of people look. Look at Dutch players, look at Brazilian players, like Brazil, Brazil center back. This is something that I haven't actually done this research yet, but I'm curious. Brazil right backs. There are, okay, there's a decent amount of them. So this might not be the best place to go, but start to think of some SBC cards that, you know, Argentina, Netherlands, Brazil, Spain, England, uh, France, that are going to be just needed a lot more for the SBCs. Because yes, you have your hardcore players that get on the web app, they complete the SBCs, but you have more and more players getting on the game every single day as closer as we get to the full release. And if those advanced SBC solutions are showing players, that's a great place to look, honestly, going to the active challenges when the FIFA 21 SBCs come out, going to the advanced SBC tab, or whatever SBCs are out that are requiring some of those maybe non-rares or 70 to 80 rated gold cards and looking through the SBC solutions and seeing which cards are, are needed to complete the SBCs. We've talked about this before, but you can honestly invest in those cards on day one on the web app and they're going to go up because people are going to start doing the SBCs as they get on EA access and you're going to see those, start, those cards start to rise. So, I know I just talked about a lot of stuff and you're like, yo, man, that was crazy. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to have questions. If you do, feel free to drop them down below. But if this video is going to help you at all, make some decisions at the start of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team, I would really appreciate a thumbs up on the channel and especially a subscription to the channel as well. Thank you guys for all the support, the amount of views and just the subs and everything has been incredible so far to start the year. And I freaking love you guys for that. And I appreciate you so much. So if you enjoyed this video again, I would appreciate that thumbs up and it is Nate the Foot Account. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.